Hey guys, it's Steven uh, from the Green Engineers, and it's August uh, 27th. Uh, it's been a long time since I've updated you guys. I think I updated you guys in January, and I see that there's some new subscribers, so also let's uh, go ahead and get you guys up to date. So the shop uh, progress is continuing. It's been two years uh, since I've, uh, almost two years since I've started working on the shop. Uh, it will be two years in December. The shop is almost ready to have the equipment put in and uh, electrical also put in and uh, that is the main goal for uh, this uh, this workspace so with the workspace right um, the idea of the workspace being as it is and requiring so much construction is to make it as uh, affordable as possible to continue running the business as the business begins to grow uh, that will also allow me to control the speed at which uh, the business can grow because I will have a workspace at, um, at a small size and I could check and then I could kind of use the, uh, the earnings later on to uh, benchmark, okay, uh, can I grow this? How can I efficiently and sustainably grow this? Uh, how When can I bring on people and do all these different things? So that's the idea of this uh, workspace is to keep things very very affordable at the beginning and i'm going to talk about the timeline for that which the timeline is actually for the next the timeline of this workspace being uh highly critical is the next uh i don't know um the next uh let's say two years let's talk about that so uh almost ready to put uh, equipment into the workspace i'm trying to have the workspace ready for that point to i think that that equipment Getting the equipment in is going to be way faster than uh, doing uh, doing the things that I'm doing right now. Uh, so putting the equipment in and putting the electrical in, I think is going to go way faster, right? And uh, the rest, everything else after that, is just kind of uh, things that I don't necessarily need, but would be nice to have. So once, and also I can do temporary situations, while what I'm doing now is all has to be permanent you know semi-permanent i could take it off but what i have to do is i have to it's it's a big problem to change so um for example if uh you know if if i have a compressor and i want to put the compressor inside of a box i could run a small compressor at the beginning and then later on put it inside the box if i want to run electrical and it's supposed to be in a certain place and it takes work to get into that certain place i can have it uh, be on the floor i could have it you know be on the floor or whatever in the meantime, or you know, strung out. On the meantime, and then later add it to uh, add it to where it needs to go, right? And so a lot of these things can be uh, done uh, temporarily, while the things that I'm doing right now have to be done to the point where you don't want to change anything later on, right? So at that point, the these other types of uh, these other types of things that I need to do can be done uh, rather quickly, right? Um, so that's uh, kind of the status so the idea is by the end of this year which would be year two of working on the workspace i would like to have it uh, be possibly equipment inside or ready for equipment to be put inside um, then once i get uh, some of my equipment in my mill and then finish the water jet and then have compressors have electrical right and have you know a, you know, have a, I'm building a custom toolbox for it to have all my tools nicely organized, have uh, stock shelves for the different components that will go into these different systems so that as I build out the, uh, the different products, then I could have that uh, pretty easy to access and all in one place um, where I can put my extra material and how to organize the extra material. Because basically from, as you guys can guess, this space is uh, very small and uh, the space is very tight on power, right? So uh, those are the things. And then right after that, I'm going to try to start uh, getting uh, um, products out there. Obviously, the easiest first, the ones with the least amount of, usually it's the ones with the least amount of uh, electronics. So things like uh, the, um, the, the hot end that I've designed or something like also the shredder, right? Hot end obviously has no electronics, and the shredder has minimal. So, 
uh, most likely something like the hot end or the shredder after testing obviously but uh, the testing would be done in this workspace and the manufacturing would be done in this workspace keeps everything nice and low profile as far as overhead and so I can have the products have a good uh, good margin as well as a good price at the same time because the whole idea of this workspace is that the cost of it is low and then those savings can be passed on to the uh, customer as well as the margins need to be higher because if I want to do this full time because the demand is lower drastically lower so I want to have uh, a low price for a low demand and thus I need to match with a low overhead in order to be able to do it full time right so that's the idea of the the workspace right and uh, hopefully by the end of this year uh, 2022 um, I can be start going forward with that so let's go ahead and talk about uh, the products with uh, the products that I am working on so most of them have been kind of idolish except for so uh, again we have the hot end design we have a um, um, we have the extruder, uh, extruder V2. We have uh, the fill factory, which I call a fail factory. And then we have the shredder, which I call the reclaimer. And then the main one that I'm focusing on right now is, of course, the workspace. Workspace is like number one. And then number two that I'm uh, promoting the second uh, most amount of time towards the green engineers. Actually, technically, there's a third one, which is also my classes. My classes on Udemy. I'm also spending... You know, try to spend like uh, 30 minutes or so a night on. Anyways, um, so that is my workspace and then my 3D printer design. And so my 3D printer design, I basically developed a new technology for uh, 3D printing uh, that now I'm going into testing uh, with. And so... I'm working towards a uh, patent on that. I'm not exactly sure where I'm going to be going on that uh, on that patent. If it's you know uh, how I'm going to release the product is basically what I'm saying. And so I'm still thinking about that uh, whether I'm going to be going uh, open source or closed source. How I would do open source. How I'd do closed source. Uh, how am I going to manufacture it and all that stuff comes to uh, comes into play. But uh, whether you open source or close source, you have to, it's all licensing terms, right? Uh, so the, you can't license something that's in the open domain. So you basically need to patent it, right? And so uh, this will, this I'm working on a utility patent for this, uh, this kind of technology. And in the United States, which is where I'll primarily be patenting it, uh, we have switched to a, um, like uh, uh, it used to be first to invent, but that was really hard to prove whether you were actually first to invent. I'm sure there's a lot of fraudulent stuff, uh, people saying that they were and fraudulent and, and basically fabricating documents and things like that. And so now we switch to, but the rest of the world was first to uh, patent, and so now it's like a race to the patent office. So I'm going to be working on. Uh, so now that it's first to patent, some things are kind of weird. One is there's two different types of patents, right? Utility and design. Design is like the look of it, and then utility is like the actual function, the technology itself, or the utility of the material. Like how is it useful, the usefulness of the product, while design is just the look of the product. Because you could have basically the difference is with a design, you could have something else that looks different but performs the same uh, utility. And so that is protected that hey you can't so an example is like a coke is like the coke bottle the the glass coke bottle the green glass coke bottle that was design patented you cannot copy that right but you can have a different bottle but not that same shape and do the same thing hold your liquid or whatever and uh that is you know your uh uh that is your design so utility is is the usefulness right and so there's two, and then there's two different types of applications. There's non-provisional and provisional. Provisional is just to put a date stamp on uh, your product that, hey, I'm getting ready to come to the market uh, with this technology. Well, not come to the market, but uh, I'm working on a patent for this technology. I want to I want to do a very simple provisional patent 
right? Just to hold my place in line. And then uh, that now is your timestamp of, okay, I am first to file, right? I'm first to file. This is the time that I filed. Anybody that filed after me does not, uh, it's not valid. Anyways, uh, and then you have a year to provide the non-provisional patent, which the patent application, which is the full patent application. Uh, and then so you have to have within 12 calendar months of bet- uh, after the non-provisional, otherwise your prov- non-provisional is no longer valid and your place in line is not held, right? But the weirdest thing that I've heard, because I've talked to a lot of patent attorneys about this, is that the there is like a blackout time, which is when you file a non-provisional or if you wanted to file a patent, uh, not, uh, if you file the provisional or a non-provisional, let's say you file a non-provisional first, uh, it's the same thing as filing non-provisional, is that the non-provisional and provisional, you cannot see, they do they are private and cannot be seen until 18 months after the filing date, which is very strange, right? So for example, you can see how this can cause a problem. Uh, it's good and bad at the same time. So that way you kind of develop the the technology in secret and uh, um, nobody would know about it because it's not public. But also the same thing, if you are doing patent searches, which I've searched uh, 300 to 400, I think maybe even 600 uh, 3D printing patents and I've not seen anything like this, um, then uh, you... There could be a patent that there could be a provisional patent or a non-provisional patent that has already been filed in the last 18 months that you cannot see, right? And it's 18 months from whatever you filed first. So whether it's a non-provisional or the provisional. So if you file the provisional first and then a non-provisional, it's not from the non-provisional. It's from the provisional. So 18 months from then. So if you file it exactly 12 months later, then that means that your non-provisional, your provisional becomes public and your non-provisional becomes public six months after that 12 months. So a total of 18 months, right? And so it's kind of you're shooting in the dark. So I could be developing this technology and somebody's already provided a provisional patent. Right, and so this is where the timeline comes in. That I told you about the development timeline. So what that means is that with the next two to three months of CNF concept and feasibility to make sure that this uh, technology is actually going to work how I think it's going to work, and actually has value to put in the money to get a patent, because a patent's anywhere but between ten to fifteen thousand dollars at the end of the day to get just a U.S. patent, right? Uh, so is it worth the money to patent? That's number one. And number two is um, then we got to get uh, then I got to get with a patent lawyer and write up a non-provisional, a good non-provisional. And then usually what they recommend is that you go from a non-provisional, sorry, a provisional to a non-provisional. And then so you submit the provisional first, wait 12 months, submit the non-provisional. After you do more testing and you kind of uh, add to it or you refine the wording in it, Right, not too much, because then you have to provide another. Uh, then you have to provide another um, provisional. But remember, nobody can see it. Nobody can see the provisional. It's it's not even public, right? So you can work on it, right? And then um, at that twelve calendar months, then you release the uh, non Then you release a non provisional. And what they su- suggest is that you do a really good provisional, and then just spend a little bit of money to convert the provisional to the non provisional is what they recommend. That way you don't have to worry about a whole lot of this, oh, this non-provisional is not the same as the provisional that you filed before, so we're not going to hold your uh, we're not going to hold y- your spot in line because it's basically a different we believe is a different patent than what you did before. The the claims, which is the important part, the claims inside the patent are different, right? So basically what that means is that you are developing a technology in the dark for at least 18 months after you uh, put in either your non-provisional or your provisional patent. And so let's say I spent three, uh, let's send, let's say I spent another two months developing the technology. I already spent one month. So let's say I spent another two months uh, developing the technology. Then, um, then I release this, uh, uh, this provisional right now and it takes let's say another month to release the provisional so now i've been working on it for four months and then i wait eight and then i wait 12 months and then spend the money to convert the uh the provisional to the non-provisional 
And then in another six months, I find out that, hey, these 18 months plus four, these 22 months that I've been working on it uh, are for naught, right? Either either I can't couldn't do the patent or um, I have to change it, right? So another way I can do get around that is changing the patent uh, by the time that I... Um, that I get to that point, right? So let's see how. Uh, so how can I continue with this? Um, so that's kind of where the timeline for the workspace comes in. So uh, most likely operating out of that workspace for at least uh, the next the end of this year. So let's say just the end of this year, then then twenty months from that about. So about twenty months from that. So almost two years. Right, and on the other on the other time, uh, ha having any other technologies that I plan on not patenting it, right? Or I know for sure nobody's working on it. This one I'm not sure, right? This one's, this one there could be somebody I don't know. But uh, from the ones I've looked at that are public, I do not see anything. But there could be something that is not public that I can't see, that I can't see. Anyways, um. So that's kind of the, the timeline. So you guys will see this printing technology maybe if I decide to go through with it, and I'll mention if I decide to go through with it or not, if the concept and feasibility actually uh, yields fruit. Uh, I'll let you guys know. And um, th so basically you won't be able to see this technology for uh, uh, 20, maybe 24 to 30 months from now. Anyways, um, yeah so but i think that that would definitely be the best seller and that would be something that i would have to build a, like a factory to produce uh that kind of product and have uh, more uh, employees than i initially uh planned on having anyways um to build something like that this uh this 3d printing technology you know support team manufacturing team etc cetera, etc cetera, whatever um okay so then working on the workspace, right? This technology, the timeline, 24 to 30 months or so to get it out to the public. Obviously, you can possibly find out about the technology about 18 months in. I'll see if I'll mention something like that. But then the whole thing would be to get it to uh, people that are um, experts or are knowledgeable in the, or beginners and people that are knowledgeable inside the 3D printing community to get their hands on it and test it and then also YouTubers to talk about it and uh, show you guys kind of what it's all about and get it out there to uh, expand the uh, user base and then uh, go into crowdfunding and, and go directly to consumer right uh, and then at that point set up uh, see what the type of demand I'm looking at and then set up a, a factory uh, to um, basically uh, take up that demand right and then obviously build the company sustainably uh so that i don't uh, so that you don't have too much overhead or you can't you know you have this big influx of crowdfunding and then that crowdfunding falls off and it's like okay now i have way too many people you know that type of thing or way too much equipment or way too big of a space or whatever and so the first you know first couple runs the first while while that's building up after the crowdfunding it'll be all made out of the workspace so I've already perfected the workspace over that uh, uh, two and uh, two or three years or whatever, and um, uh, so that guy is ready. That will, will be ready to uh, be where I produce uh, some of the first uh, some of the first units, maybe with one person. The, this workspace is ba basically you can only fit like two people in it. Anyways. Um, yeah, and so the development as well as the initial manufacturing can all be done inside this workspace. And that would basically be the place that I would work for the next, uh, build the, the green engineers for the next 30 months, right? So that's why the workspace is so crucial, is that uh, for 30 months, my products are more going to be more niche, while this one that I'm working on will be more uh, widespread. Okay, so that's uh, basically what I've been working on. Um, uh, super excited to show you guys the technology. Obviously, it's going to be a long time from now until you guys can see it. Uh, hopefully, um, once I have the chance to show it, I can show it. Because even after 18 months, that those those uh, these ones the um, 
the um, filings become public, but that does not necessarily mean within 18 months that you're going to get the patent because at that point the patent will only be uh, six months, right? The patent will only be sitting there for six months, and I still think that it's about one to two years right now for the patent office. So uh, I would have to be really, really sure that uh, that I'm going to get the patent. I might not even wait that full 12 months after the provisional just to make sure that it's going. See what I'm saying? So it might even be um, three years. Yeah three years until this technology uh, sees the light of day and gets into customers hands right but at that point uh, so that's the next segue into the next thing I'm talking about which is um, the kind of how my my day job fits into this so the idea is still within the next less than a year within the next maybe eight to nine months I would like to be a uh, full-time uh, green engineers and Luckily, because of this workspace, uh, it will allow me to it drastically lowers the overhead and the threshold to go full time. So with a couple of these products out, uh, I do think that it would be a good idea to uh, be able to go public with uh, or, or to continue going with uh, these kinds of things. Anyways, um, so also a couple of my other technologies, I may look into uh, patenting as well. Obviously, I can't patent everything because then I have to wait until it is uh, um, everything is filed and I'm pretty sure I'm gonna get it before I can release it right because again my worst uh, my worst fear in all of this is that again in that dark in that darkness I release a product and then I get a whole bunch of initial crowdfunding right and then I get a cease and desist from a company that has produced a, a patent that I didn't know about right and that I couldn't have known about until I've already developed the technology for let's say a year and then release the technology and then six months in hey this patent pops out hey this is patent pending now it's public I can show you that I've done it right and now it's public and now I submitted it before you and so I'm going to get it before you do so that is uh you know and then I've already have backing from uh, customers and then now it's like okay I got to cease and desist I'm either going to pay damages for everyone that I ship or something, right? And especially after I already buy all the materials to make all of it, right? Buy the materials, buy the equipment, hire employees, blah, 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 all this, or build a factory, whatever. And they're like, okay, you can't sell this anymore. That's uh, my worst fear on this kind of thing. Anyways, uh, so that's about all I wanted to talk about. Um, Hopefully, uh, I'll try to update you guys again on uh, what's going on probably towards the end of the year, and uh, uh, we'll go from there. All right. Uh, thanks. Uh, thanks to all the new subscribers and the people that have been subscribed for a while. Uh, this is uh, an update on what I've been working on. Um, I'll see you guys uh, later at the end of the year, and we'll see where we're at on the progress here. And then, obviously, by the end of the year, I will know whether this concept and feasibility is uh, going to go through or not. All right, let's go ahead and uh, stop it here, and um, I'll see you guys in the next one.